In the next couple of videos, we're going to talk about managing bond portfolios. But before we get to bond strategies in particular, I want to talk a little bit about interest rate sensitivity, right? What is the riskiness of bonds measured by their sensitivity to changes in interest rates? So let's kind of think about where we're going to go here. We're going to talk about interest rate risk. That's how sensitive interest rates are to, uh, and how they affect prices. We're going to measure this by something called duration. And then we're going to increase duration's accuracy by adding a concept called convexity. And then in a later video, we will talk about some strategies for managing um, bond portfolios. So let's look at some of the characteristics that we're interested in and some of the things that we know are true about bonds, interest rates, and yields. So bond prices and yields we know are inversely related. If interest rates go up, bond prices go down. From looking at some examples in, in uh, some formulas, an increase in the yield to maturity, right, has a smaller price change than a decrease of equal magnitude. So what this means is if the yield to maturity changes, there's going to be a change in price. But if the increase, if an in, if the say the yield goes up one percent, that will cause the the uh, price to change a certain amount. But if the uh, yield went down one percent, the smaller price change is for a decrease rather than an increase. So when interest rates will go up at a faster pace than what will happen if interest rates are going uh, down. Long-term bonds are more price sensitive than short-term bonds. As maturity goes up, this price sensitivity though increases as we stated, but it's at a decreasing rate. Interest rate risk is also inversely related to the compound uh, to the coupon rate. So high coupon bonds will typically have low interest rate risk. Next, we have price sensitivity is inversely related to the yield to maturity when the bond is selling or at which the bond is selling. So again, the as if it has a higher yield, it's going to have lower price sensitivity. So let's think about this measurement. Again, duration is just a metric to help us measure two things. It gives us an effective maturity of the bond. In other words, kind of gives us a payback period for the bond. The other thing that it gives us, though, is it gives us a, a measure of how sensitive prices are to interest rates. So higher durations will be more sensitive. So when interest rates change, for a high duration, the prices, if interest rates change, the prices will change in a more substantial way. The formula for duration, though, is kind of intense. But let, let's continue with the terms here first, right? So duration is equal to the maturity for a zero coupon bond. So if you have a zero coupon bond that has 20 years to maturity, the duration is 20 years. Why is that? Well, it's because the present value of the price at 20 years gives it its current value, and there's no interest to speed up the payback, if you remember my previous definition. So the duration of a coupon bond 
is always going to be less than what the maturity of the bond is. So the duration of a 20-year coupon bond must be less than 20 years. So here's the formula, right? It's a pretty massive formula. So we need to find the sum of T times W. What are T? T is the time. So one period, one year, two years, three years. If you're doing this semi-annually, that also would have those time periods, right? So it would be in every year would have two periods. The W, though, is a calculation. It's the cash flow in a T divided by 1 minus the yield at T, right, to the T power, and then you divide that by P. So to create a table for this, every year you calculate the cash flow divided by this and divide it by the price at the beginning. You do that for every single year. Then every single year you multiply that number times the time period that it occurred, and then you sum that column. That is D. That's duration. It's a measure of sensitivity. So the price relationship then is the change in price equals negative D times, now here's our formula. It's the change in the yield, one plus the yield, divided by the current yield. Now, we do have to adjust this a little bit to what's referred to as modified duration. So D star here is the duration divided by 1 plus the yield to maturity. So to calculate the percent change in price, it's negative D times the percent change in yield. So now we can calculate where we think the price will go to if we expect a certain change in yield. And indeed, because of the formula, because it's negative D, if the yield goes up, then the price goes down. If the yield goes down, the price goes up because it'd be a negative times a negative. So if we look at the spreadsheet that we have for this class, here we have this uh, bond, $1,000 coupon, uh, $1,000, 8% coupon, 10 years, 30 years to maturity, 10% yield, I'm sorry. And two is the compounding frequency, and the current price is $750. let us look at the duration information, right? So Mockley's duration, that's one okay, is 22.06. The modified duration is 19.9. Now modified duration is the number we use in calculating the price change. So if the percent change in yield to maturity was plus 0.02, right? So negative 0.02 times 19.09. Would tell us that the change in value would be negative 0.4%. And if you calculate that out, that means we would expect the new price to be $747 and a penny less than the current price, right? So that's as, uh, I mean, the formula is very complicated. The higher the duration, the the larger the change in value. So the bigger the number, the greater the interest sensitivity between the bond and um, interest rates. So what are the rules? Again, the duration of a zero coupon bond equals its time to maturity. If you hold maturity constant, the duration is higher if you have a lower coupon. Lower coupon bonds are more sensitive to interest rate changes than higher coupon bonds. 
you hold the coupon constant, a bond's duration increases with its time to maturity. So again, the longer the bond's time to maturity is, again, even keeping the coupon rate constant, it will have a higher duration. Longer term bonds have higher durations than short term bonds. The duration of a coupon bond is higher when the bond's yield to maturity is lower. So again, we've holding other things constant, we're now changing two things. If the coupon bond is a high coupon bond and it has a low maturity, then the duration is gonna be high. And finally, we can calculate the duration of a level perpetuity. It's one plus the yield divided by the yield. Again, this is really more of a theoretical position, but uh, certainly it's still a rule. The challenge we have with duration though, is it assumes that bond prices and yields are linear. And in fact, what we find is that it is not, right? So the duration rules are good approximations for only very small changes in bond yields. So bonds that have greater, what we refer to as convexity, have more curvature in the price yield relationship. So if you want to calculate a more accurate change in price, you need to take into, uh, 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 into consideration the actual curve. So let's look at what this means. So duration assumes this black dashed line and that the relationship between yield to maturity and bonds prices, uh, the percent changes, is straight line. And we find that it is not. It is actually curvilinear. So for a very small point in time here, right, it, it is pretty close. But when you get to larger and larger changes in yield to maturity, the curve starts to take effect. So the actual change in price is uh, much greater for both up and downside than what you would expect uh, with just using duration. So again, to be accurate, right, putting in quotes, air quotes, accurate, we need to consider convexity. So here's the formula for convexity. It didn't get any easier, right? So it's one divided by the price times one plus the yield squared. Now we need to find a summation, right? You take the cash flows at each time period, divide it by one plus y to that time period, and you multiply that by t squared plus t. You do that for every period. You add those all together, multiply it by this uh, product, that's convexity. So find the price change then, take the negative duration times the change in y, right, the change in the yield, plus half of the convexity times the change in the yield squared. Where do we get these complicated formulas, right? This is a formula for this curve, the curve within the bond valuation formula. So this really is a calculus equation. Uh, my calculus skills are nowhere near strong enough for this particular type of, uh, of uh, derivation. So if you look at two bonds, one, Bond A has a greater convexity curve than B. So what does that mean? It means that if everything were else were even, bond A would have a higher convexity level 
a higher sensitivity to risk than B in real terms, right? So higher convexity means bigger price increases when yields fall than when they lose, right? So again, it's not that there's a difference in the relationship. There's a difference in the size of the change. The more volatile interest rates, the more attractive this convexity is to investors. So bonds with greater convexity will have higher prices and or lower yields, all else being equal, right? So investors like to understand a little bit about this convexity because it does give them an opportunity that if they expect yields to fall, they expect prices to jump, but they jump dramatically compared to if they thought yields were going to rise and then prices were going to fall. So again, where do you go? Where do you, what types of bonds do you buy? Kind of depends on what you think future yields will be. So that's the end of uh, this video. Look forward to talking to you in the next one.